So Run DMC was always the name. Was that always the name you wanted to use? Nah, back in the day, you would have names like the Furious Five or Grandmaster Flash or the Funky Four Plus Ones. We were going to be the sure shot, too. And then management came up and said, why don't you call yourself Run DMC? Because I was Run and he was DMC. Mm -hmm. But we wasn't going to call ourselves Run DMC. We were going to be the sure shot, too, like everybody else with the Funky Four or the Treacherous Three. <laughs> So we was like, we're the sure shot, too. He's like, no, no, let's do this. And it was, sounded weird at first. We was like, all right, we'll go with it. We listened to management, and it kind of worked out. It kind of worked out. A little something, something. It more than worked out. I got to ask, where y'all get y'all style from? The streets. The streets. We, we would go on Jamaica Avenue in Queens. And whatever was in the store, we had a couple bucks. We'd get an Adidas suit or some sneakers. You made it and, fly. Yeah, we, well, that, we took the beat from the street and put it on TV. Took the beat from the street and put it on TV. So we didn't have outfits. The outfits was whatever we had on in the hood. Yeah. So whatever you got on, go on stage. How you feel when you still see people rocking your looks today? Ah, oh, man. I'm inspired by what rappers did before me. So when people tell me, oh, like Ice Cube or somebody, like, I love what Run DMC did, and I'm thinking, oh, I love what Grandmaster Flash did. I love what, what, uh, what Grandmaster Kaz did. Mm -hmm. So I had heroes of my own. So I can accept when somebody says they love what I do, because I know how I get shook when I see Melly Mel. <laughs> like, well, that's Melly Mel. <laughs> Don't push me, because uh, I'm close, close to, to the, the edge. edge. Right, so when okay. I see Melly Mel, I'm like that. So if somebody sees me and they say it, I'm like, OK, I get it. You're like what I wear when I see Flash. Yeah. Because Flash is the original dude wow. on them turntables. Listen at this. OK, I okay. love right, right, right. learning Gives from the legends history. like yourself. You got me on the edge of my chair. You see me that? Me too. I got the history coming at you. That's history coming at us. OK, now. LL came in, I like the timeline. A little bit after. After y'all, right? He's from around Hollis, right there on Farmers Boulevard. All these legends came from the same. Yeah, LL, LL was definitely a threat with the big muscles and. Okay, so he was a little competition. How y'all feel about him coming out? There's a lot of competition because he would come, my radio. Like, <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> somebody's after the crown. <laughs> yeah, but LL was an amazing rapper and I definitely had to keep. He was right on my back. We did a lot of touring together, but yeah. he's a serious, he's like Gigantor, big muscle-bound <laughs> rapper, <laughs> take his shirt off, muscles. I'm like, okay, all right, let me, let me keep my eye on this dude. Yeah, keep your eye on him. Now, speaking of legends, you're talking your docuseries about meeting Michael Jackson? Yeah. What was that like? Well, after we made Walk This Way, Michael wanted to make a record with us. And he came into the studio, because he had a studio set up, and he had the bubbles with him, the monkey. Bubbles? Was with him. Okay. <laughs> he walks in, and I ask him the question. I say, because I'm like caught up, like, Michael, how does it feel to be Michael? And I'm thinking he's going to, you know, the limos, the big life. He's like, very, very thankful. <laughs> I'm like, that's not the answer I was looking for. <laughs> I wanted to hear something spectacular, but that's all he said to me. He's very, very thankful. So we um, put together some music for him. And he went one way, we wanted, was, he was on fire, Run DMC was hot too, and we never connected back to finish the record, but he's very, very thankful. <laughs> That's what he said. Listen, my son loved your show, Run's House. Okay. He got me put up on that oh, show. It oh, it? baby, we was watching it together. Okay, okay, okay. Like, what was your favorite part about doing it? Um. Waking up and being able to work at home. Mm. And then when the cameras leave, I can get in the bed. That's a boss right there. So how, how could you have a better job than when you wake up in your house and then when they leave, you're still home? I don't have to go home. Yes. So we did that for like six seasons and it was the, it, it wasn't only easy, it was fun and it was helpful to people to yeah. show a family man. Like you go from rapper That's a great to family point. man in front of the whole world on MTV. Mm. You, you, you show your children, mm -hmm. you show your wife, you show love, you show unity, you show the ups and downs, and you give the world something that they can look at and right. say, man, I love that. When I get older, I'm gonna have children. I wanna treat my wife nice. I wanna be kind. I wanna be loving. I wanna be like the Rev. So that was my job, <laughs> to give my life to the world. And um, I never took it as, some celebrity stuff. I took it as a job mm -hmm. to give God's word on camera to the world, especially on a, a channel like MTV. Yes. You know, you're thinking it's going to be some ratchet craziness, but it was just a loving, kind, happy 
show, mm -hmm. giving out love and Real giving too. out lessons. Yeah. Like, did the words of wisdom in the tub? Yeah, that... let's talk about that. Uh, yes, <laughs> the words of wisdom in the tub. Do you do that all the time? I still do it every day. You do? Every single day. If you go to my Instagram, Rev W O N, I'm always giving words of wisdom because when I get in the tub, I get relaxed. I'm like, all right. And then God just starts speaking. speaking. And I hit him like, do your best and forget the rest. Or whatever pops inside of me, mm -hmm. I give it to the world. And I take that as being able to give the word of God in my tub to the world. And I did that on MTV. And that is a calling. Calling. Call to do that. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. That show was for me to give the world positivity. That's what this show is about. As, of course it is. That's my goal. That's why I'm here. You see that? We all want to know, how did you go from Rev... How did you get to Rev Run? Well, you know what? With all the fame and notoriety that God gave me, I was all the way up, but I was still empty once you got there. You know, mm. you're thinking this is going to fill you, or it's going to fill me to be a big star. It's going to fill me to rap and fill me to do... And all of a sudden, God takes you... Well, me, took me to the very top that I had to get back grounded and find God. So I just started going to church. I didn't know I was going to be a rev. Mm. I had no idea I was going to be a reverend. So I was just like moving through, trying to find what's next for me in this life. And in the black church, you don't just go to church. You're going to be an usher. You're going to be an You're going to be a deacon, deacon board. board. You're going to be a uh -huh. choir. A trustee, a choir So that director. collar got wrapped around my neck as I, you know, stayed in the church, right. did what I was supposed to do under great Bishop Jordan Come on. and um, at Zoe Ministries. Yes. And when I was there, I had great mentorship and I became the Rev. <laughs> I didn't mean it, mm. but your call you're me. called. You're called. That's Chosen. what I said. You think you're doing, but you're being done. But you're being done. You always yeah. remember that. You think you're doing something, you're being done. I'm taking that in That's as, true. as we speak. Thank you so much for that. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.